Hey, it's Austin. In this video, I'm going to show you how to rebuild a Mini Cooper Turbo. This is a KO3 Turbo, so we're going to use the rebuild kit that we sell. This has the upgraded thrust bearing. So first thing to note is what caused the failure of the, tur the turbo to go bad. And in this case, the thrust bearing clogged up with some, like, a uh, I guess old dried up oil or something so uh, you know we're just going to replace all that and this is also a web bearing so ours is stronger than this one. Now the next thing that you want to look for before you even think about rebuilding your turbo is uh, you want to check the wastegate to make sure that it does seal properly still because with this uh, design of the wastegate that BMW and Mini did it had a really bad issue with wearing out in the bushing which caused it to not seal back here in some cases I've only seen that once but for this one it's still good now next is uh, the rotating assembly that comes out of it in this video I'm going to show you the upgrade that we do just because I have to rebuild this anyway so we're going from a 38 millimeter to a 50 millimeter and then on the turbine I think it was like 38 millimeter 37 and then we're going to a 44.49 blade that's the KO4 turbine now I did all the machine work so I made a fixture that I, to machine this out and the compressor housing we're using is a, a custom housing that I had remade that I made for you guys and uh, I had to have it recast because of the difference in the the size here where I, you can't fit the 50 millimeter wheel in but anyway let's get on with the rebuild I'll link to all the parts in this build inside the about box, the description box, in case you want to buy any of these parts. So I'm not going to show you the disassembly process, but I will show you the assembly process. So as a bare center section already cleaned out, usually you want to clean this out with gasoline, especially if it got coked up in there with oil. And uh, we want to go ahead and put our little C-clip back in the back of this. <clears throat> so the way that I get the C-clip in here is I drop it down the center here and then use something to hold it in the back side so that you can use this pliers so that you can compress the C-clip. The Sharpie marker worked pretty well for me just because it's about the same diameter in here. So then the next thing you're going to do is, well, make sure you clean all the parts first, but I've already cleaned this with gasoline and aired it out, is install the journal bearing. I noticed that this is the twin feed bearing, which it has a much larger hole on the inside, and then it also has these holes here, which the other one doesn't have, so... It's just better for lubrication and it's more critical to have this than the factory bearing because of the simple fact that this is only a stationary bearing turbo. So now that you've installed the bearing, you can go ahead and install this piece that retains the bearing. And that goes in with the pointy thing in into the bearing just like that <coughs> the next thing you're going to install is this piece this little C-clip the way that I get this in here is with the open end down and then just compress the C-clip. So once you have that in, 
that holds the stationary bearing in place. And then the next thing you're going to do <coughs> is install the thrust hardware, which on this assembly, Ian went ahead and balanced it for us. We recently picked up a balancer. And the corrections we had to make were back here. And he had to make some corrections on the back side here. One thing you'll notice, even with the factory Mini Cooper compressor wheel, is that it likes to stick on the shaft. It's just, on some turbos, they're designed that way, just so that it has a tight fit on the shaft, because that is really critical for it to uh, not move, especially when it's in operation, because it has to be snug in the location, especially if you do a rotor balance. But if you heat up the wheel, then it comes off pretty easily because aluminum expands much more than the steel does. So go ahead and install the thrust collar or spacer, whichever one that is. And then after that, you can install the thrust bearing with the oil feed down. Here's what it looks like with the bearing installed with the collar under it. The next thing you want to do is be sure to install the black o-ring onto the bearing housing. Then you can take the oil deflector and put that onto the thrust bearing. You can take the front seal and install it on the thrust collar. A lot of people mess this up though it is kinda easy if you just know how to do it. You just have to put the open end over top of the collar first just like that and snap it back. And make sure you put some oil under the seal. And that piece will go and snap inside of this. Now for this plate, I had to machine this for our larger compressor wheel. And you just wiggle that in until it goes in. Now you can take the plate and you can install it on top of the, the bearing housing. But first you want to go ahead and squirt some oil onto the top of the bearing. And, and also be sure to oil inside the oil feed and inside the journal bearing too. You can go ahead and lay the plate flush, I mean flat on the bearing housing. Put the heat shield on the back of the bearing housing. And in this case your heat shield is going to look like this. But in my case since we did an upgraded shaft the factory heat shield doesn't fit anymore. So what we have to do is install a TDO4 Subaru heat shield. Now you have to make sure you get the right one if you're doing this upgrade or you can always contact us about this. But the difference is that the TDO4 series has like three or four different heat shields. So take the heat shield, put it on the back of the bearing housing just like that. Now you're going to take the rear seal and put it on the shaft. And a lot of people mess this up too, though it's really simple. The open end goes down the shaft first. And then you want to put oil under the seal. 
So go ahead and put the oil underneath the seal. And insert the shaft into the bearing housing and uh, be sure to squirt some oil down in there, which I already did. <clears throat> you have to make sure that you're holding this plate up because it will fall. Once you have that in, you can install a compressor wheel. Which be careful because your compressor wheel could still be hot. I like to use the red Loctite. Now we, when we put this together, we have to make sure that the compressor nut alignment mark marks with, or aligns with the compressor wheel and the shaft. So the way to do that is sometimes the nut will grab the wheel and sometimes it won't. So you just have to kind of prepare for it when you tighten it up. The way to properly tighten this is you can torque it down to 84 inch pounds. Or the other way is if you <clears throat> uh, snug it up and then add one, for, one fourth turn with the wrench. Once you're happy with the alignment, then you can go ahead and install the compressor housing o-ring. Now the next thing that you want to do is oil up this o-ring. And then install it into the bearing housing. I mean, into the compressor housing. And bolt down the compressor housing. Make sure that you remember the rotation.
So now that you have the compressor housing installed, next we can install the turbine housing. Next thing you want to make sure that you notice is the dowel pin here. Make sure it's there. If it's either here or it's in the exhaust housing. And the dowel pin for the exhaust housing is right there. One thing that you could take note of is that uh, if you can locate this V-band clamp to where it's easy to take off the car, pull the turbo out without taking the exhaust housing off the car, then it's a good idea to go ahead and put it in that location. So here's what the finished product looks like with the shaft upgrade. And here's the compressor side. Now for this turbo, I actually designed the housing to eliminate the blow off valve. So it's more of an aftermarket piece for somebody trying to make uh, more horsepower but you would just insert your old blow off valve right there however you could if you wanted to you could cut that or I could cut that for you so that it's divided again but I don't know how pretty that would look and I was kind of afraid to mess with that but yeah this is the end result I think it looks really good you can always comment below and tell me what you think of this upgrade, whether you like it or don't like it. But uh, yeah, for this upgrade, I offer all the parts that to do this build. I offer to sell them. However, the one thing that may be really difficult if uh, you're not used to or don't know anything about machining is that for this exhaust housing, I had to make a special plate which has a special angle so I had to make a plate so that I could machine this and it was kind of it took up a lot of time it actually make took me more time to make the plate than it does to actually machine the exhaust housing for the compressor housing I had plenty of those in stock plenty of the five blade billet wheels I had plenty of the nine blade shafts and I'll go ahead and link to all the products that I have listed so that if you want to buy them you can if you want the service to do this upgrade i also offer that too uh, if you want the service you need to contact us at turbolab america at gmail if you're just looking for the parts just go to all the links that i list there if you can't find it you can always contact us at our email address so thanks for watching and please comment and subscribe